We have a 2003 to 2006 Chevy Silverado cluster Chevrolet, GMC Hummer H2, and Cadillac Escalade. They all share the similar platform if it's truck or SUV. The cluster minus the different trims and basils is nearly identical. So we're going to be disassembling it today and showing you ways that you can prevent from breaking these two tabs and all the tabs around here in order to avoid any further damage. Oftentimes we see customers sending it in with a broken tabs on top or bottom. The trickiest ones are probably going to be these two right here. So we're going to be taking it apart step by step how we would do it and showing you in case you ever disassemble it the best way to do it. So the first thing you want to do is have it up top side and basically you're going to want to loosen this up. You got one, you got two, and three. And notice with my fingers here, I'm kind of creating that wedge. And put it down. If you put it down too hard, these three top clips could snap back on. So now I'm going to be driving it with my right hand side, creating that wedge gap. The trickiest part is getting the, these two bottom tabs open. The tabs are inside and they're inverted. You'll have to use either a pick or something sharp. I like to use something like this. The picks are usually pretty good at driving it into one corner. So as you can see me simultaneously opening up the top side, none of the three tabs at the top are snapped back in, which is good. And basically what we'll do is open this up. And before I do that, I just want to show you how I would go about there's these little tabs right here. If you can see it, what I'm gonna do is slide into one side, and like so. And while I'm prying it with a screwdriver, it should pop right out. So let's see how that works. So as I'm prying the board up, I'm gonna insert the clip inside here. And now I'm inside on one corner. And basically, here's massaging it out. If it doesn't come out right away, try the other side. Try not to stab it too much because the more you stab it, the more it might drive itself in there and it won't come out. So basically I got one tab freed up and let me show you what that tab looks like. The tab is already loose and we're going to do the second one here and I just drive it inside and do the other side like so and you'll notice as soon as I'm pulling up what that looks like you can see the two tabs when you're opening it up you're essentially trying to pry it into one corner of the tab and just kind of lifting it towards yourself like this while simultaneously prying on one of these tabs whether you're right-handed or left-handed so that's the tricky part about opening up this plastic lens cover um, now that that's removed, we're going to further disassemble it. Um, you can see these gauges. This one looks, uh, you can hear by the sound. It's more shot. You can use a plastic tool removal or you can use a fork. Um, you just want to make sure that you're removing it safely. With older clusters, if it's been on there for a decade or so or longer, um, th there's the potential of it breaking. So you can see how I'm going to slide underneath right here and I'm going to pry on it. But notice how I'm not putting full force on it. You want to wait until the needle itself pries out. Put a little pressure on your wrist and just you can see the needle here breaking. We see a lot of needles coming in with broken um, stems because if you pry it too quickly they can easily break. So give it some pressure and hold on to it while so it doesn't pop off and fly all, all over the place. And there you go. There's the first one. I like to grab it from the under the bottom side. If you're using something like a metal objects like fork, you want to make sure that you're not doing it over the LCD displays so you don't scratch anything. Um, the, the last thing you want is a blemished faceplate. So basically, we're going to do the same thing here. Hold the forces and pop out. And 
secure it snap. You know, if, if the gauge does not want to come off, the needle doesn't want to come off, then just take your time. If it's old, you'll see the inside of this um, gauge needle actually flex. If you pry on it quick and fast, it'll probably break it off and you don't want to do that. So you want to just take your time, keep the pressure on your wrist and basically there you go. And what I mean by the stem, I mean basically the stem right here. So this stem right here will break off if you pry it off too quickly. So we'll just do the rest like so and you can hear it snap off. Some of them come off a lot easier than others. And there you have it. Now it's able to um, have the top faceplate removed. Um, I call this the faceplate right here. Um, they have this printed circuit that comes off separately, but we're not going to take that off. We're just going to take off the whole faceplate altogether. And you can see there's four more tabs on this side and three tabs on this side. It's much easier now to actually remove it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And notice my two fingers here. I'm always using some kind of pressure to go ahead and basically remove it here. And there you have it. And here's the circuit board. So now that the circuit board's open, you can see what you have to fix. Um, these circuit boards, particularly for the 03 to 06 uh, circuit boards, they typically have lots of issues. So on some clusters, the incandescent backlighting bulbs uh, are removed from the back with needle nose pliers or a screwdriver. In this case, they have to be desoldered. So if any of them are bad, uh, we pretty much replace all of them. If one goes out, they typically go out in batches. So we want to replace all of them and basically desolder all six of these stepper motors, replace the brand new ones and put new uh, power components, solder anything that needs to be done, um, take care of anything on the backhand side. Um, if there's any corrosion or solder cracks, cold solder joints, uh, we to particularly uh, test the plug here to make sure that there's no intermittent connection. And that's how to disassemble a 2003 to 2006 um, Chevy, GMC, or Hummer cluster Cadillac. So the models that this would fall apply to would be a Cadillac Escalade 03 to 06. There would be the Hummer H2. Um, then there's the GMC Denali, uh, and also the Yukon, and then Chevrolet Tahoe. The 1500, 2500, 3500, um, Silverado, uh, and that's how to open this one up.